Hey there, ACCA performance management students. If you found this video here in YouTube, it probably means that you are frustrated and you're stuck on variance analysis. I think it's the most difficult topic in your performance management syllabus. Well, in this video, I'm going to demystify the sales mix and the sales quantity variances to help you get a pass on your upcoming exam. And if you'd like more variance analysis help, you can join my Variance Analysis Bootcamp at the link below. You can find it in the description. All right, guys, let's get started. In this video, I am going to explain what the sales mix and the sales quantity variances are all about. And to do this, let's imagine we have a little business Steve's used cars. So I have a business selling used cars and I only sell two types of cars. I will sell Fords and Porsches. Now the sales mix and the sales quantity variances only work when we are selling multiple products. And we now need to recognize which one is the high margin, which is the low margin. And we can tell right away the Porsches are the higher margin product. And now we can look at our standard contribution. And the Fords give us a contribution of $2.00. The Porsches give us a contribution of $11. So this confirms what I said before. Porsches are the higher margin product. Now let's look at our sales in units, not in monetary terms. We can have a budgeted sales and an actual sale. So, the beginning of the month, I had a target of selling five Fords and one Porsche. How many cars in total did I plan on selling? That's right, six. Now, the actual sales at the end of the month, we actually sold three Porsches and two Fords. So I actually sold five cars in total. Now that we have these basic numbers in front of us, we can conceptualize what these variances are all about. Now, the sales quantity is simply about the total number of units sold, ignoring the mix or the ratio. So our budget was six units, our actual was five units. We sold fewer units than planned, sales quantity is adverse. That's the easy one. Now if we look at the sales mix, we intended to sell the products in a ratio of five to one, cheap to expensive. But look at this, we actually sold, so the budgeted mix was this, the actual mix is much better, isn't it? The actual mix we sold a greater percentage of high dollar products than the budget. So the mix variance is favorable. And the quantity variance is adverse. We sold a fewer cars in total than budget. Team, there you go. That's the interpretation of these numbers. And in section A or section B, you can usually eliminate two of the answers just on the logic and then the final distractor you can often just eliminate based on a quick look at the contribution. Let me now show you how to calculate these variances. The sales mix and the sales quantity variance are a breakdown of the sales volume variance. Now, before we go on, if you are fuzzy, 
on the sales volume variance. You need to go back into the video library and you need to find my review of the basics video and you need to recap that sales volume variance because the sales mix and the sales quantity are just a breakdown of that basic variance. So hit pause, go back and check that out. When you're ready, come back here. Welcome back. Let's continue. Now on our journey to understanding the sales mix and the sales quantity variances, we are going to review the sales volume variance calculations. And we need two items. We need a budgeted contribution and we need a flexed contribution. We have two products. We've got Fords and Porsches and we have a standard contribution for each item. We've got $2 for the Ford, $11 for the Porsche, and we've got budgeted units, five and one. So if we do the math, 10 and 11, the budgeted contribution is $21. Next step, let's calculate the flexed contribution. All we're going to do is take our original budget, which was to sell Fords and Porsches. Standard contribution remains 2 and 11, and we just use the actual units, which are 2 and 3. So if we do the math, so the difference between these two numbers is the sales volume variance. And the contribution is higher, so we know that it is favorable. So we see that that is a $16 favorable. Good news. This tells us that in the end, Profit is higher than budgeted due to selling more units. But now I have a follow-on question. What did I do successfully to give me that variance? Did I sell more to a total number of more cars? Or did I manage to change the mix? Did I upsell and have more customers buy Porsches in percentage terms. Well, now we get to the sales mix and the sales quantity variance. And to do either of these variances, I am going to do a simple second calculation. And I call this revised budget. All I'm going to do is take my original budget, which is $21, and I'm going to multiply it by the change in total units. And we can see that over here. We were supposed to sell five, but we sold, we were supposed to sell six, but we only sold five. So the sales volume variance is adverse. And we can now put a number on that. We're going to go five over six to revise this budget. Again, five over six, six were, was the budgeted units, five the actual units, so the drop in units, in total units. And that comes to 17.5. With these three figures, I can now put a number on the variances. I've got my original budget, my flexed budget, and then a revised budget on total units. We are looking for the sales quantity
and the sales mix variances. So I don't memorize formulas. I memorize templates and then the formula just comes to me naturally. So on the left here, the difference is the total number of units quantity on the right. The total number of units is the same, but it's just the ratio of the of the products. So that's the mix. And we can see that the sales quantity variance will be the difference between these two. And we see the revised budget is lower, so it's adverse, bad news. And that number is 3.5. So the sales quantity variance is 3.5 adverse. That reflects the fact that we sold fewer total cars than expected, but the sales mix variance, well, that's clearly favorable. And that is 19.5 favorable. And those two numbers then net to my volume variance of 16 favorable. Performance management team, there you have it. The sales quantity variance is adverse by 3.5. That tells us profit is lower by 3.5 due to selling fewer units. However, in those fewer units, we had an improved product mix and we sold a greater percentage of the Porsches. So the mix variance is favorable. Those two numbers net to the sales volume variance. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a wrap on sales quantity and sales mix variances. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you can give it a like and you can also view my performance management playlist, which is right here. Guys, good luck on your upcoming PM exam.